it's hit us in a way that we didn't even expect. Miriam and Diana Ortiz are two sisters who had been living in the Smith houses without power or water. They had been staying with their aging parents. Their father has heart problems and hadn't left the apartment since the storm. Miriam has asthma, but she had climbed up and down 12 flights, she says four times daily at least, to walk the dog, gather food and water, and get medicine for her father. Is Mayor Bloomberg going to see this? Maybe. Oh, I'd like for him to see this because it's not about making money and putting luxury around the streets. But I mean, there's a lot of elderly people living in this building that shouldn't have to go through all this. And the shelter is not the only answer. The Ortizes chose not to stay in the shelter, mainly for their father's health. In fact, the Smith houses have the highest percentage of elderly tenants of any housing complex in New York, 30% according to federal calculations. And conditions in their building had deteriorated. They led us up the stairwell. It was dark and reeked of garbage and feces. But this is what we get for being poor. At least that's how they treat us. This is what you pay for, this is what you get. Inside their apartment, the air was thick and stuffy. For days, they'd been heating their home with boiling water pots. In the tub, they collected what little water they could from the pipes. It was the only way to flush the toilet. Who is it? How are you? We're just basically uh, knocking from door to door, uh, making sure everybody's all right. If you need food, you guys anything. There's a list of uh, shelters. You can go to, uh, to them at any time. Okay, we're going to have this. Okay. Everything is, besides this, everything is all right? Mm, so far. So far? Just wait and get the uh, power back in the water. Yeah, everybody is in New York City. I mean, what's the latest? The latest is, uh, we don't know. Everyone downtown seemed eager to help. Private companies sent generators. Politicians sent water bottles. The NYPD provided its own support, as did the National Guard. I know, I understand that everybody's been out here for a while. They've been without food and water and power, needless to say, for, for several days. So we're, we're trying our best to help them out. Resident Shirley Miles said she thanked God for the help that the National Guard had provided her and her family. You know, living in the day ain't living for tomorrow, living for right now. So otherwise, you know, me and my daughter will be fine. We're hanging in there, and this too shall pass. Other residents were skeptical of the relief efforts. They said their low-income community had been left behind in the city's recovery. Peter Powell waited in line for a packaged meal. His building across the street had been flooded since the storm. I think there could have been uh, more response. More, some, we, obviously, a lot of places need generators. They really needed some generators here. This is a project, Smith Houses. This is uh, an Article 4 housing. I'm sure Wall Street has electricity. <laughs> you know, Battery Park has their electricity. They, they, can, they can pump out all the water out of the transit system, but they can't pump the water out of this building in four days. As the sun went down on Friday, residents braced for another long, dark night. On the Bowery, AT&T contractors worked on an electric truck when all of a sudden a few streetlights came on. The city was getting the power back on block by block. But the Alfred Smith houses were still in the dark. Mm -hmm.